It is a fact that the sacred narratives described in the Quran, such as the story of the flood at the time of Nuh السلام, the story of uh, Joseph, Yusuf السلام, uh, the story of the exodus um, from Egypt, the hijrah of Musa السلام, with the Bani Israel, the Quranic versions of these narratives make much more historical sense than their biblical counterparts. In other words, the flood and the exodus as described in the Bible are basically historically impossible or at least highly implausible. Somehow, the Quran avoided many of the problematic historical claims of the biblical authors. And this is from the Dala'il and Nubuwa. This is one of the proofs of prophecy. This is a proof that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was a true Nabi, a true prophet. For example, I'll give you an example. The Bible says that 600,000 men of fighting age made exodus from Egypt with Musa السلام. This means about 3 million people made exodus from Egypt. If we count the women, the children, the elderly, not to mention animals, 3 million people plus livestock. Historically, this is almost falsifiable. This would mean that basically a third of the entire population of Egypt made hijrah. This would have been noticed by other civilizations in that region, yet no one recorded it. Three million people for 40 years would have left a major footprint in the Sinai Desert. There is none. If three million people were marching, just to give you a visual or to conceptualize this a little bit, if three million people were marching, 10 men across, when the first row reached Mount Sinai, the last row would have st still been in Egypt. What does Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala say in the Quran? The Exodus is confirmed in its general sense in the Quran, but there are changes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the narrative that are extremely important and often overlooked by even scholars, let alone average readers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa awha, wa ila Musa an asli bi We reveal to Musa alayhi salam, journey under the cover of night with my servants. Indeed, you will be pursued. So they all left in one night. And Fir'aun, Pharaoh sent summoners to the cities. Saying these people are a small remnant, a small remnant, according to the Quran, a small group of believers in Allah and His Messenger Musa السلام, made hijrah, made the exodus. How many Sahaba made hijrah from Mecca to Medina during the time of the Prophet? It was a small group. The biblical version of the exodus cannot be true historically, while the Quranic version is very plausible. If the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, plagiarized the Bible, which is the standard Quranic, the standard Afwan, the standard Orientalist trope that he plagiarized the Bible in the Quran, then they say this even to this day. Why didn't he copy these problems? How did he know to make this adjustment to the narrative? How did the Prophet وسلم, in quotes know that the rulers of Egypt at the time of Yusuf السلام, were called Muluk? They were called kings, not pharaohs. The ruler at the time of Musa السلام, was called Fir'aun, was called Pharaoh. The Quran is correct historically. The book of Genesis gets it wrong. Why didn't the Prophet وسلم, call the ruler? Why didn't the Prophet again in quotes call the ruler of Egypt at the time of Yusuf السلام, a Pharaoh like the Bible did? How did he know to make this adjustment to the narrative? How did he know to avoid this, uh, this anachronism? It's called an anachronism.